Two and a half minutes. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> We're both shot today. <laughs> I had to get up at four o'clock to take some people to the airport. And uh, so I'm uh, I'm kind of wiped out. Um, got my pneumonia shot yesterday, and I think that's kind of mm-hmm. having an impact today. So. And Cap uh, didn't like it that he was oh, gone. The, the dog. So I was awake too. When I leave, the dog is just very sad. <laughs> Separation anxiety. Yes. So <laughs> okay. I know that I'm loved. I know that I'm loved. We're going to sing a long hymn, six verses. But, um, boy, it's a precious hymn. Henry Light. I um, don't know the guy. You know, 17 and 1800s. Uh, but it's Abide With Me. I sang this with my mom before she died. Um, we've sung it at many funerals. Uh, it was the first couple of verses were a bedtime, um, bedtime song for one of our kids. And uh, it's just a very, very precious song. I don't remember, 878. I hope you enjoy singing it. i 
Okay, we're in Proverbs 29. This is the last of the Proverbs of Solomon, collected Proverbs of Solomon. 30 is the Proverbs of Agur, and uh, 31 is the words of King Lemuel. So, um, much of this is repetition from before, uh, pretty much all of it. There are a few few points I want to make, but uh, we won't have a whole lot to say today on, on this. <laughs> too sleepy. Think about actually a bit of a focus on government, on people who have power. Um, I put that famous Lord Acton quote, or just the intro of it at the in the uh, uh, information for the for the uh, stream here. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit. So, chapter twenty nine. He who is often reproved yet stiffens his neck will suddenly be broken beyond healing. That's a that is a good one right there though, actually. <laughs> yeah. If 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 you keep getting corrected and you're not listening, it, it's gonna not turn out well. When the righteous increase, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, people groan. He who loves wisdom makes his father glad, but a companion of prostitutes squanders his wealth. By justice so here's here's the first of the ones I want to focus on. By justice, a king builds up the land, but he who exacts gifts tears it down. The alternative translation of that exacts gifts uh, says um, it might be who, he who taxes heavily. I'm not going to make any comments about about uh, current tax law or anything. Although uh, we're coming up in a month on tax day and. <laughs> Uh, it is can be burdensome, isn't it? One of those times when you think about your government a lot more. But uh, it's not just taxing. It's the idea of, does the country exist for you as a ruler or as an authority to pull things out of it? Is it for you to get stuff because you've been put in charge so you can suck it dry and be a parasite? Uh, sometimes it seems like that. Uh, and there is this, this very famous quote that I know you're aware of from Lord Acton. John Emmerich Edward Dalton Acton, I think. <laughs> oh. Who was, he was a, a British member of parliament. Um, but he was a member of parliament from I for Ireland, okay. for a section of the county of Ireland. Born in Italy. <laughs> Died in Germany, got his university degree in Germany. <laughs> uh, a well-traveled um, man, and he wrote, he wrote that it, the whole paragraph. There's a whole section um, around that quote that's well worth thinking about. Not just that little brief part that we so often quote uh, that power cor power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Um, he wrote that in a letter to, I think, an Anglican clergyman as they're talking about the papacy. Hmm. And uh, and though he was Roman Catholic, um, uh, he was uh, he was a part of a movement to try to prevent at that time, eighteen forties, eighteen fifties, to try to prevent the uh, the declaration of the Pope being infallible. Because giving anybody, a churchman or a president or a king or anyone, power tends to corrupt. And, and 
uh, he, he goes on to say something to the effect of, uh, we tend to think that these people who have power, the important people, uh, that they, by virtue of that, that we need to be more understanding, more favorable towards them. Um, and we excuse things because they're who they are. He says, it's the other way around. We should be more judgmental. We should be stricter. We should be more demanding of those to whom we give power and authority. Um, because the, the king, if he seeks to rule in justice, if, if he seeks to do the right thing, he builds up the land. But if he's king in order to suck things out of the country, in order to get this for himself and get that for himself or get this for his friends, uh, he, he is pulling it apart. Like we talked about uh, a husband or wife when they're constantly quarreling or critical, that they are pulling their marriage apart. Rulers, presidents, governors, senators, congressmen, mayors, uh, bureaucrats, anybody who's uh, bosses, CEOs, managers, anybody who's been given authority and they use that authority to, for their own gain or for their own aggrandizement, you know, to make themselves bigger, they tear apart the society, the culture, the nation. Well, that'll be revisited here in other ways. Verse 5. A man who flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his feet. That applies to a lot of politics, too. <laughs> a, an evil man is ensnared in his transgression, but a righteous man sings and rejoices. A righteous man knows the rights of the poor. A wicked man does not understand such knowledge. Scoffers set a city aflame, but the wise turn away wrath. If a wise man has an argument with a fool, the fool only rages and laughs, and there is no quiet. So don't be bothered to go and correct people on the internet. Just just don't. Just don't <laughs> even try. It's a waste of time. The fool's just going to rage and laugh. Bloodthirsty men hate one who is blameless and seek the life of the upright. A fool gives full vent to his spirit. But a wise man quietly holds it back. If a ruler listens to falsehood, all his officials will be wicked. Once again. Go ahead. I'm going. Yep. The poor man and the oppressor meet together. The Lord gives light to the eyes of both. Uh, that's an interesting contrast. It, just reminding us that even the oppressor is still someone God created and that God is sustaining and that God cares about and doesn't want him to be an oppressor. He doesn't want foolish people to be fools either. But uh, the Lord gives light to the eyes of both. If a king faithfully judges the poor, his throne will be established forever because the poor can't give him anything. If he is faithful to them, then he is faithful. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. When the wicked increase, transgression increases, but the righteous will look upon their downfall. Discipline your son and he will give you rest. He will give delight to your heart. Where there is no prophetic vision, people cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law. By mere words, a servant is not disciplined. For though he understands, he will not respond. Do you see a man who is hasty in his words? There's more hope for a fool than for him. Whoever pampers his servant from childhood will, in the end, find him his heir. That's interesting, isn't it? Mm, yeah. We don't we don't have a lot of servants. <laughs> True. I mean, we have we have brief servants. Uh, we should come up with a term for that. Hmm. Um, uh, intermittent servants. So, go to a restaurant and someone else cooks for you. You have a cook, and you have a maid or a butler. People who come to your table and serve you. And is there anything else I can get for you? 
No one at home is doing that. <laughs> well, well, sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well. I cook for you. Oh, yes, I know, but. Oh, honey, is there anything I can do for you? That I don't hear that very often, and you don't either. <laughs> sometimes, when a person's feeling low, we do that. But, uh, but we, uh, we do have many people who serve us. And, uh, and yet, if, if a person is pampering a servant from childhood, that's, yeah, I'm not sure that's an experience we can quite relate to. A man of wrath stirs up strife, and one given to anger causes much transgression. One's pride will bring him low, but he who is lowly in spirit will obtain honor. The partner of a thief hates his own life. He hears the curse, but discloses nothing. The fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. I think those two are related, right? Yeah, I think so. Many seek the face of a ruler. Here's a, here's another, here's a nice little punctuation mark for our, our, uh, our little underlining for our Discussion of politics. Many seek the face of a ruler, but it is from the Lord that a man gets justice. And we were saying before, by justice a king builds up the land. But kings are not always justice. Judges are not always, kings are not always just. Judges are not always just. Uh, authorities are not always just. It is the Lord who can give us justice. And he is the only one, ultimately, who can. So, sucking up to a ruler, that's uh, not very useful either. And finally... Oh, an unjust, an unjust man is an abomination... Ah! <laughs> you got off track. I just saw that Mommy started to, to watch. Oh. <laughs> Threw me off. Hi, Mom. <laughs> An unjust man is an abomination to the righteous, but one whose way is straight is an abomination to the wicked. Mm. Mom, usually she reads better than that. You, you <laughs> she know. knows. <laughs> so that's an interesting thing that the uh, for the to the righteous people who are unjust are an abomination. They're offensive. It's an offense. And, but it goes the other way also, mm -hmm. that to those who are unjust, the righteous are an offense, they're an abomination. We talk a lot, it, you hear this language a lot in our society now, but uh, this offended me, you know, um, and uh, maybe that's a good place to apply that, to, to ask, okay, if someone's offended, that doesn't mean that they're righteous and the other person is not. It might be the other way around. It might be that they're offended because they're unjust, uh, because they're foolish or they're or uh, self-centered. Um, maybe we should not focus on the offense, on the abomination. Maybe we should focus on who's just and who's following the Lord. Well, uh, these are the last of the Proverbs of Solomon that are recorded here the, of this collection. There are 2,000 more uh, that were not written down for us. I'm a little bit glad of that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I want to read 2,000 more. Um, tomorrow we will read uh, the words of, of Agur, son of Jake. And, and then we'll have a very special uh, gift of Proverbs 31, a very special chapter there. And then we're going to be moving on, at the end of the week, we're going to move on to the Gospel of Matthew. And that'll be refreshing. We've been in the Old Testament for a long time now. So, let's pray. Father, we can read wise sayings. We can, uh, we can study and memorize them. Our parents told us many wise things. But living them. Lord, even Solomon, who had collected all this wisdom from people around the world, and to whom you gave great wisdom, so he had understanding, 
That did not curb his desires or or take away his sin. Solomon himself played the fool. Lord, we thank you that you have a heart of forgiveness. That you could forgive Solomon and bless him. And that you also, Lord, can forgive us for our own foolishness. Lord, send us your Holy Spirit, that we may indeed be wise, not wise and great, but wise and humble. And whether wealthy or poor, that we may act in wisdom and mercy and love like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. See you tomorrow.